is the Darren Harris Podcast. Here's your host, Darren Harris. Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Darren Harris. This is my podcast, y'all. How you feeling this week? Hopefully everybody is good. Hopefully your mental state is good. My wife had surgery today, and it was an outpatient surgery, but all surgery is serious. But everything went well. My mental state was a little frazzled for a while because every time she goes in for a procedure, I always, I always, always, always like assume the worst is going to happen. And that's not always the case, but that's something that I deal with as part of the condition that I suffer from is just, I overthink the shit out of everything. So, you know, she rest, she, you know, she made me real comfortable. The doctor also made me feel really, really comfortable. And actually, you know, shout out to Dr. Rosenberg in Gainesville, Florida. He's the man, you know, for making, making, making more, making, making it possible for me to have more memories with my wife. So, and if anybody didn't know, my wife last year, last year she had around the same exact time, she had a double mastectomy and reconstruction surgery. And today was the second part of the reconstruction surgery. And there's one more, one more part to go. She tested positive for the BRCA gene, which, you know, if you're unfamiliar with it, it's, it's, she was actually high risk. It's the gene that detects uh, uh, breast cancer. If, if it's passed along to your family. And her mother died from breast cancer. Her sister uh, also had tested positive for the, the same gene, and she, she made the brave decision as well to become a superhero in my eyes and, and be proactive and, and try and prolong her life as much as she possibly could, all the while advocating for, for breast cancer awareness. So shout out to my wife, shout out to her sister, and, and shout out to every woman going through this, and shout out to every husband that is going through this with their wives, because it is not a easy thing to, to go through, to watch your wife suffer, to you know, always be worried about what's going to happen. What could happen next? Is it going to happen anyway? I'm always, that's always in the back of my mind, but you know, today was, was a triumph in, in the respect that, you know, uh, some of those fears were put to bed. So shout out again to Dr. Rosenberg and baby, I love you. I'm going to do this podcast and I'm coming home and we're going to cuddle and snuggle and all that. You hear me girl. So, so what's up everybody? What am I talking about today? Today, man, listen, listen, Diddy, Diddy, I really want to talk about Diddy. So I'm going to talk about Diddy for a few minutes, but then we're going to talk about something else. So first off, right off the bat, I do not feel sorry for this motherfucker. I really don't. What he did to these people, you know, all of them girls is digestible. And for him to sit up and be like, oh, like that, that shit is even more digestible. Now, Everybody's like, oh, you're tearing down a black. No, 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 no. Miss me, miss me, miss me. Because that dude, he did shit that he didn't have to do to people. He exploited people that he didn't have to exploit. And he did to a lot of people. And he didn't think about it. And he was malicious about it. And he was nonchalant about it. He was he was hurtful about it. And because of that, you know, I, 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 I ain't got no flowers for homie. You know what I'm saying? I just can't get down with homie. And none of that. And sure, he put out great music and all of that. And But I just really cannot, I can't support nothing this dude did. There's all kinds of rumors spreading around. And I ain't going to spread no rumors, man. I'm not going to, so I'm not, but, you know, part of me wants to now believe some of those things that I've heard. And and if you know, if you know, if, if you kind of, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? So, listen, man. Whatever this guy gets, people say that his life is in jail behind bars. We, oh, you did that shit to yourself, homie. You did that shit to yourself. And I don't have, I mean, I feel sorry for you more than anything because you didn't have to do that and you fucked your whole life up. You fucked a lot of other people's lives up. You fucked Shine's life up. You know, he, I mean, you, you, you sent dude straight under the fucking bus, dude, and then fucking kept driving over that bitch. And that was wrong to do. He was young, he was talented, and you basically shit on that dude. So, like I said, I don't have, you know, no remorse or no, oh, poor Puffy. I don't, I don't give a fuck about that. All right, you did that. Now you got to do what the fuck, you know, is coming to you. So, but 
With that being said, I want to say this. Do not spend too much time wondering what the fuck is going on with Puffy. It's cool to sit there and think about it for a few minutes and, and play along with it and look at the, the, the posts about it. But don't get consumed. Do not become consumed. And I'm going to tell you why. Because there is a lot of things that are that still causing division in the country and destabilization here in the country and usually when there's something huge like this in the news oh my god a huge star goes down because of some bullshit it's usually because they trying to pull some other bullshit under our noses right in front of our eyes so this is the time to stay diligent and you know, don't don't get caught up in the minutia. Oh, yeah, cool. I right, puffy. Yeah, cool. Is in, in for that matter, any other kind of sensationalized media that might be out there, because, again, remember, the media isn't always your friend out here. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes the media is out here on that bullshit and they be out there on this bullshit a lot. So with that being said, listen, don't get caught up in all these news stories so much and at the same time, I got to follow my own advice because not too long ago, I did the same thing. I was I was I was in it. I was always, oh, you know, trying to check out see what was going on at current events. And it was, you know, it started making me mad because one thing I did is I dove into politics. I was into some politics for a while and it made me mad and maybe sour, maybe, you know, you know, cuss out people that didn't need to be cussed out. Maybe some people who really kind of did, but a lot of people who really didn't, you know, just regular hardworking people like myself. I mean, just just people out here living a life who may have a different opinion than me and, and vice versa. But what the political scene did was it made me, man, it made me really, really, I want to say angry at, at the wrong things. It made me angry at people when I should have been angry at the systems, okay? I should have been angry at the systems that are trying their hardest, especially during this election year, to divide and drive us apart. I think it's so crazy that it's not only here in this country, but it's a lot of other places. And I'm going to take a quick, fast break. And when I come back, I'm going to talk about more of the destabilization that's going on all over the world. There's a lot of stuff going on that we really kind of... You know, we got to keep our eyes open, man. I'm just saying, keep your, keep your motherfucking eyes open. All right. I'll be right back. Hey, yo, everybody. What's good? Check this out. It's Darren here from the Darren Harris podcast here for Factor Foods. Listen to this, man. Ever since I got turned on to Factor Foods, no prep, no mess meals. I've had a lot easier time meeting my health and wellness goals and an even easier time keeping my kitchen clean. It's cool because with Factor's 35 different chef-prepared meals and over 60 add-ons, you can tailor your diet to the way you want it to fit your needs perfectly. You can choose a calorie-smart diet to a high-protein diet, from a keto diet to a vegan to vegetarian. They do breakfast, lunch, and dinner, so no matter what time of day it is, Factor Foods has you covered. Another cool thing about Factor Meals is they're ready in just two minutes in the microwave. They're dietitian approved, they're super nutritious, and absolutely delicious. You can easily support your lifestyle effortlessly with six menu preferences to choose from to help you manage calories or boost protein intake. You can avoid meat or just simply eat better, more nutritious food. They use nothing but premium quality ingredients to prepare all of their meals from filet mignon to blackened salmon and more. So I don't know what you're waiting on, maybe for somebody to to tell you to go to factorfoods.com forward slash darren50 to get 50% off your first box of factor foods. That's factorfoods.com forward slash D E R O N 50 to get 50% off your first box of factor meals. And if that's not enough, you also get 20% off of your entire next month. Check that out because they're so nice. So again, go to factormeals.com forward slash darren50 to get 50% off your first box of Factor Foods and 20% off your entire next month. Trust me, man, it's worth every penny. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the show. So I'm talking about the effects of like the media and the destabilization and, and all of that stuff, the effect that it has on us every day and how it affects our lives and how we can take steps to prevent it from, from interfering in our lives in a negative way. So 
like I was saying, there's a lot of destabilization a lot of places. If you look at the Democratic uh, Republic of Congo, Ukraine, of course, there's a a destabilization in the Middle East. There's destabilization in Burkina Faso. And there's also destabilization right here in the United States. And it's on a lot of different levels, the destabilization here, because there is a a large racial destabilization. There's a large political destabilization. There's a large, uh, uh, I guess, sexual uh, orientation uh, uh, divide here uh, based on the LGBTQ community and the opposition to that. There's a lot of opposition and destabilization behind that opposition. And it really does start to take a really big toll on your mental state of being from day to day. And you may not realize it, but it really kind of does. And a lot of people are very, very numb to it because they wake up every single day. They put on their clothes. They go to work. They eat their lunch with their coworkers. They come home and they hang out with their family for a few hours. They lay down, they get up and they do it all over again. But they don't realize that the things that they hear throughout the day, you know, Jennifer said at the, you know, da 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 da, P. Diddy did it this. But then something happened. Oh, you know, Israel launched some bombs over here, which, you know, I'm going to talk about what they did in a little while. But, you know, they launched some bombs at these people. Or, you know, Vladimir Putin said he's going to, you know, bomb Ukraine out of existence and take back Ukraine and make it part of whatever it is. There's all this stuff that, that affects us as we listen to it. And, what culminates the whole thing here right now is it being an election year and it being, you know, the Crips versus the Bloods, for lack of a better phrase, it's the Democrats versus the Republicans. And it really is the two of them doing a number on the country. They don't they're not really they're not really giving us much hope, are they? That they're not really I mean, even still, I see people in both parties' bases starting to falter and starting to have, you know, of course they both have their diehards, but, you know, even in those diehards, there are people that are starting to question, what the hell is going on here in America, man? Why are we falling apart? We are unraveling here. And and the closer we get to November 5th, and I'm so afraid of this, and this is another thing that I'm talking about. The closer we get to November 5th, the more it is. it seems like this impending doom that is about to happen that is just looming over all of us where it's just like, yo, man, what are we going to do if this dude wins or but what the fuck are we going to do if this chick wins? So it's, it's, it's all this anxiety. And I myself, I suffer from major depressive disorder and extreme anxiety. And it is... A lot of times it, it is it, it affects me very, very deeply, you know, and I have a lot of insomnia behind it. I, I don't sleep a lot and I have, I have bad dreams and sometimes it just it just kind of gets the best of me. It overwhelms me and I had to step back. I had to take a break. And what I found out is a lot of it was social media. And so I, I, I literally did. I took a step back from social media and said, hey, listen, I'm not going to let this thing overcome my life and I'm not going to let it dictate to me how I feel every day. I'm going to try and reclaim how, you know, some of how I feel because, you know, I had I take medication and that really kind of helps me feel better to begin with. Now I'm trying to throw it in reverse by watching all this negative social media. So I'm really kind of, you know, being counterproductive you know, at the same time. So I decided to lean back off of, you know, the political content. I started watching shit like cat videos and, you know, just bullshit, you know, just, but I got to the point where now I'm, I'm, I'm lost and I don't want to be lost. And I know that there's a lot of people in that same space where they don't want to be overran by all this negativity, but they don't want to be left out of the loop because they don't want to be caught with their ass out. And I'm that dude. So if you're like me, I understand that. I understand I understand how you feel. And for me, this is one of the ways, and this is just one, this is one of the ways that I deal with that. I go for a walk with my wife. Simple as that. I just, I I put my phone down. She puts her phone down and I go for walks with my wife, just a getaway, not even with our, our animals. And I can't walk very far anyway. I walk with a cane. So I, I, I go for, you know, maybe a walk around the block just a little bit, you know, just to, just to kind of put me in a different space. You know, I don't go out and eat. I do not go out and eat because 
I have a, a tendency to eat emotionally. Now, I'm not necessarily overweight, but it, I, there's a lot of bad things, a lot of bad things that come with eating a lot and eating the wrong things. And I've been notorious for eating candy bar after candy bar after hamburger after cheeseburger after slice of pizza after chicken sandwich, etc. And recently, like I said, I've gotten away from that. You know, especially since I've got turned on to Factor Foods, not to you know plug Factor Foods again, but to plug Factor Foods, it's actually been really good and it's helped me a lot. They have juices also that they get, so I kind of got these juices that I can kind of you know tailor to make me feel better inside, you know, to make my mental state feel better as well. And it, I can't bullshit you, man. It works. So you know, but you know, back to the story, I really kind of just, I try and, I try and correct my diet. I try and focus more on things that are better for me, that are going to help me. And also I focus on projects, different projects, things that I like, things that I loved, things that brought me happiness back in the days when I didn't realize I was this depressed person or before I even had depression. So I took it back in the days so i started drawing graffiti again you know and i started taking pictures again on some photography and trying to half-ass you know internet film make you know i mean whatever it is i've tried to put all my focus and feeling back into myself and what i feel the most positively and the most strongly about if that makes any sense i don't focus and dwell on what the fuck's going to happen, you know, after November 5th, you know, now sometimes it does cross my mind, but I make a, a conscious effort to say, Hey man, I am not going to sit here and live here. I'm not going to sit here and let this consume my brain all afternoon or all two days or all week and a half or all month as it sometimes does, especially for me this time of year, it starts to get kind of bleak for me. You know, I mean, there's been some times, you know, in this time of year that, you know, there's that I care not to really remember. But I do. I keep I remember them and I keep those times close to me because it it did. It kind of galvanized this stronger person, but it did put me in a place where, you know, I was abusing myself and others were abusing me mentally. You know, I was homeless at one point and that. I mean, that did a that that did a doozy on me, you know, it really did and gave me a lot of insecurities, a lot of insecurities about myself, a lot of insecurities about society. And it just made me not trust a lot of shit. So I've been climbing back out of that hole for years now and it's been going well. I really can't front it like especially as of late, you know, I've been I've been, you know, going to therapy and you know, and that has been the most life changing thing. Now, I've been to therapy before and I've also been uh, um, admitted into psychiatric facilities uh, two times, one time in one time in Queens, New York, one another time down here in Florida. But now that, you know, there's a hint as to where I'm at. But I did go through 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 that and it was it was very serious, but it was very eye opening. And it really did make me say, hey, listen, I need to take a step in 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 making my life better otherwise it's just going to get worse from here and i could i don't want to think about what the worst part is so back to not paying attention to all of the negativity i decided you know that i'm not going to sit here and doom scroll and look at you know or seek out even negative content about things but instead because i do make content also and if you want to follow me, I'm Darren Harris comedian, Darren Harris comedian on Instagram. If you want to, if you care to follow me, but what I did is I, I when I started making content, I I wanted I wanted to a show that I was that I, I I'm I have a humorous side. I'm not always serious. I don't I'm not always serious. But B, I really wanted to say something to people, man. And I don't, I always say this. It, it doesn't matter if you know two people get the message or two two hundred thousand people get the message. As long as somebody gets the message and understands, then I I I'm satisfied with that because at the end of the day, I just want people to be a little wiser as to what's going on in their daily surroundings and what's going on with themselves personally, what's going on inside of you with your life. Forget about everything else. If you didn't have a job or a spouse, would you be a happy person? If you didn't have friends or a car or a home, could you be a happy person? Are you happy with who you are? 
and it's very deep. All of this is very deep. And this all goes back to what you look at on social media and what what your friends talk about at work and you know, what your parents influence, how you how your parents influences you and you know what your girlfriend says or your boyfriend says to you about what they believe politically and how you how you are how you react and how you think about all of these things. It's very important. So for me, I take it very seriously and I try as hard as I can to recognize when there is something that is interrupting my flow or there's something that is taking up or absorbing too much time or making me feel too anxious or giving me too much depression. And I'll talk about that when I come back from this break. I'm Darren Harris. I'll be right back. As a prosecutor, I never asked a victim or a witness, are you a Republican or a Democrat? The only thing I ever asked them, are you okay? And that's the kind of president we need right now. Someone who cares about you and is not putting themselves first. I intend to be a president for all Americans and focus on investing right now in you, the American people. And we can chart a new way forward. I'm Kamala Harris and I approve this message. So I got a friend that I talk to pretty much every day or every other day. Lives down in St. Petersburg. We've been friends since we've been children. And I did a podcast not too long ago, a politically a politically charged podcast. And at times the two of us have political views that kind of differ from each other. And you know, sometimes the conversations get a little bit heated, but, you know, never really gets to the point where it gets hateful. Well, the last conversation that we had politically, well, not not recently, but the the, the, the one that maybe the one that provoked the podcast or 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 came. I, I, I went over it in the in one of my podcasts. It, the last political we chose I. It was it was fuck you. We were both prepared not to talk to each other behind shit that we see on fucking TV. Shit that they're pumping full of our, you know, in, into our brains. Shit that's coming right over our 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 feeds, our news feeds, our program, our our social media feeds. You know, and whenever we sit down and decide that we're going to watch Fox News or CNN. By the way, no, don't ever watch Fox News or CNN because they're doing it on purpose. There, there are people that are doing it on purpose. But I had to recognize that, hey, man, it's making me angry at one of the most dear friends I've ever had in my entire life. And I'm reacting poorly because I'm passionate about what's being talked about and I want to be informed. Yes. If there's black issues, you know me, I'm pro black, like a motherfucker, but I want to know, but I don't, I don't need to be militant and I don't need to be hateful and neither does anybody else. You just need to stand firm in who you are and be confident in who you are. That's it. Don't let nobody provoke you. Don't let nobody take you out of your character by some bullshit they may and they may be going through or some shit that they can't control, whatever. But try to try and try and understand this. And this is something that took me years to understand. The more you react to some shit, the less credibility you have, the less the, the less wits about you, the less stability, the less everything you have. When you fly off the handle, especially, you know, in the heat of the moment, when you don't think and you speak, you say a lot of shit that you really don't mean and you damage people, you damage yourself, you damage relationships. I mean, like I said, this is one of my dearest friends and I'm we're ready to call it quits over two people we never met and don't give a fuck about us. You feel me? So... I decided that it 
it's not worth it. So we had a hurricane and I was thinking about him. And, and right when I was thinking about him, he texted me and he said, hey, man, you guys all right up there? And I texted him back. I said, yeah, man, we're good up here, man. I just want to tell you, I'm sorry, bro. You know, I'm sorry. And it's always, it made me feel good to to be a, a, a good person and apologize. You know, not that, I mean, he, he reached out, but I, it made me feel good that he reached out and it made me feel good that I was able to apologize to him and tell him, Hey man, I'm sorry. You know, I didn't, you know, I didn't, you know, mean to say a lot of the things that I said to you, you know, it's, it's purely reactionary based on the shit that's been coming across my newsfeed and it's been separating us. And that's, what's been happening with the world. Okay. It's not just me and my buddy, man. It's the entire world. There is a force that is here, that is present but not, that is tangible but untouchable. You can't do anything about it, and it is inflicting damage on all of us, and it is doing it on purpose. And it is malicious, and it is hateful, and... The goal is to turn us all against each other. And I do not understand for the life of me why we want to try to tear up the one motherfucking rock that we all have to live on. I just don't get it. And that's another thing. That's another trigger because that gives me extreme anxiety. The prospect or the possibility that there could be so much destabilization here in our country that we plummet ourselves into another civil war, which is not good for anyone, which is not good for anyone. Could you imagine that American refugees trying to seek asylum in Canada or in Mexico? Could you imagine that? I'm not saying it's going to be that extreme, but maybe. But I cannot let it make me unhappy. Now, one thing I can do is... Go and try and get prepared. If that's what I think is going to happen, go and get prepared for it. That'll make me feel better. That will make me feel better. Just be prepared. You know, if you think that, and that, this goes for anything. If if you think something's going to happen, be prepared, okay? Because, and, and one thing, and you may have heard this before, but this is the rule of, of the peas, and I try to keep on to this. And, I, you know, I apply it in certain areas of my life. In other areas of my life, eh, I'm working on it. But the rule of the P states this. It states that proper preparation prevents piss poor performance. Okay? Remember that. Proper preparation prevents piss poor performance. So if you're having anxiety about something, make sure that you're prepared for it. If you prepare, and this is a thing that I learned also, and I just didn't, and it's super simple. If you prepare, anxiety goes away a lot. Some of the anxiety goes away. If you are prepared, a lot of your anxiety kind of goes away. So I make it a point if I start feeling like, oh, I, I try and prepare something. I prepare. I mean, maybe I look at something that, you know, I may be working on for my family or I'm looking at something I be, might be working on for a podcast or I might be looking at something I'm uh, uh, like I'm trying to make create some content for. But I try my hardest, you know, to put myself again in that different state to take myself away from that. Oh, my God, impending doom. And just being prepared for that takes away that anxiety. So. It's all right to. You know, fuck around and listen to what the fuck's happening with Diddy. It's all right. As a matter of fact, you know, I've been looking at some of that, too. I've been thinking about I did a podcast on this a, a, a little while back, too. And it was it was it was kind of wild business because I, I kind of listen. It's all right. All right. Go out. Do your do 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 your little social media thing, but try your hardest to separate it. Separate it. Don't get caught. Don't get caught with the minutia. All right. Look out for things that are going on. Look out for destabilization. 
destabilization tactics. Look out for these things. They're eating the dogs. They're eating the cats. That's that's a destabilization tactic. That is a tactic that is put there and is now, you can't unring a bell, but it's here now. And what that's done is that's creating more division. It's creating more division. It's creating more division. You know what I'm saying? There's, and it's, it's, it's the same thing on, on both sides. It's both sides. Okay. It's Fox News and it's CNN. It's Democrats and Republicans. It's Trump and Harris. Even though my last name is Harris, I, it is what it is, though. You feel me? You, you feel me? It is what it is. Don't get caught with your ass out, but don't, don't get so absorbed to where you are stressing yourself out. You are creating anxiety in your body because like Anthony Robbins said, Anthony Robbins, shout out to this guy for this piece of information I'm about to give. Anthony Robbins said this, especially about like, like, and it has a lot to, a lot to do with your health. There's, there's, there's acid that accumulates in your body. And when you have acid in your body, acid basically goes and breaks down like shit in your body. Like if you got like a bad heart or bad knees or bad, whatever, kidney, lungs, whatever it is, acid will go to that part of your body and break and break it down even further. You know what I'm saying? Make it, making, making it worse. And anything really contributes to acid in your body, car accidents, arguing with motherfucker, all kind of shit, all kind of shit like that creates acid in your body. And what, what, what it does, it, it goes to the weakest parts of your body and it makes it weaker. So stop this shit because it definitely creates acid in your body when you have a lot of angst and that shit just fuels bad, bad health. OK, a lot of this shit is all I mean, it, it is full circle and it it really does affect how you feel like like physically on a date and mentally on a day to day basis. And we may not know. and We just take it for granted and we march ourselves around every single day. So do yourselves a favor, folks. Take a couple of minutes. And, and look at your little P. Diddy post or look at your little, you know, this guy hates Taylor Swift post or look at this guy, you know, this, this childish cat lady post or whatever it is that is your thing. But then get back on the peace, love and harmony, man, because at the end of the day, that's the only thing, in my opinion, that's really just going to that, that that's going to bring you back and ground you. It's just a little bit of a little bit of optimism, a little bit of peace, a little love and a little harmony, man. And it, and it, and it costs nothing. It doesn't, it doesn't cost anything to be friendly, to be nice to people. It doesn't cost anything to be compassionate or to, or to help people. It doesn't cost anything, man. You know, and, and, and you do, do that without, without, without expecting to receive anything return. And see how that makes you feel. See what, what state that puts you in. Because I tell you, every time I do something like that, it puts me in a state of 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 extreme happiness every time i i i go to an open mic and try jokes i've never tried before it it gives me a a a sense of extreme happiness joy and bliss because for that one second it takes me out of the turmoil that is going on in today's society and he puts me back in a time in my head that may be real or not but it takes me to a place that is nostalgic to me that gives me warmth and it gives me comfort. It gives me optimism and hope. And it makes me make me very happy. So, and you can't find that on social media or any media for that matter. That's, that's something that's inside you. That's something that you have to be willing to sit down and sacrifice social media in order to achieve a space of absolute complete content and happiness without that. And I'm not saying go throw your social media, delete your Facebook or get rid of none. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying don't let it be your life. Don't let it dictate which way you go. Don't let it dictate who you support. Do that for yourself. There are so much information out there and a lot of it is misinformation. 
or disinformation, not misinformation. Misinformation is misinformation is if I tell you something and I was wrong, but I didn't know I was wrong. I just I thought I was right, but I was wrong. Disinformation is if if people are doing it on purpose. So there is a lot of disinformation out there. All right. And know the difference. All right. And learn how to navigate around that. Okay, be smart, folks, because they're counting on you to be stupid. You hear me? I'm Darren Harris, and this is going to do it for this week's episode of the Darren Harris Podcast. I want to thank my mother because she's awesome. And she just had a birthday. She turned 77. Happy 77th, mother. I love you. I want to shout out my dad for being the man and giving me an intellect to think about giving me you know something uh, uh, something in 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 which to think about you know an instrument in which to think with thanks dad i appreciate that i want to thank my wife because she's the strongest woman i've ever met in my life and i'm wishing you a speedy recovery babe i'm gonna be home in here i'm already home but i'm gonna be uh wrapped up with you here in just a couple of minutes all right and last i want to thank well i want to thank my producer jesse yandel for encouraging me to do my show every week and and like i said encouraging me with topics and giving me all kinds of little tidbits of things that might enrage me or make me feel happy but he does it so that i can try and give you guys the best content that i can give you so (laughs) there is kind of a a method to the madness I want to thank Gentry Thomas for giving me my platform, man. Thank you very much. And I want to thank the Podcast Playground and all my mates on the Podcast Playground for having, had just, just, just having me, man. I appreciate you. And last but not least, and definitely the most, I want to thank all of my listeners, everybody out there who is listening to my voice right now. I'm thanking y'all, man. I'm going to thank you guys every single week. If you guys make it this far every week, you motherfuckers are troopers, man. And I love you, love you, love you. So... You can follow me if you want on my Facebook, um, Darren T. Harris on Facebook. That's D-E-R-O-N, the letter T as in Thomas and Harris on Facebook. And on Instagram, I am Darren Ture, T-E-R-A-E, Harris Comedian. And I believe also on YouTube, I am Darren T. Harris. So... Thank you again, folks, for for rocking with me this long. If you stuck with me and join me next week, I, I'm, I'm trying to have my wife on to talk about some shit that I've been wanting to talk about. But I keep saying to talk about it. But she told me she'll be ready here before too long. And I got to let her recuperate a little bit. So when she come on, we're going to have some cootie cat talk. All right. So stay tuned for that. All right. Thank you very much, folks. And I'll talk to you all next week. Peace.